Hi everyone and welcome to this new Code Along series. In this series, we will be making a breakout game in Godot 4.2. This series is for anyone who wants to practice problem solving and game design, while also learning about systems that are used in a lot of games. The format of this series is going to be a bit different from the Action RPG series. In each episode, I will give you a new task to solve, and I will show you how to break down the problem into smaller sub-problems. Between episodes, you can then try to solve the problems yourself before watching the next episode. And then in the next episode, I will start by showing you how I solve the problems before breaking down what the next task is. Each episode going forward will be released in two versions. One for GDescript and one for C-Sharp. And now let's get started. Okay, so this first episode will be a bit different, of course, since we haven't had any tasks to solve yet. Instead, I will show you what style I'm taking my breakout game before breaking down what the first task will be. But please remember that there are so many ways you can follow this code along. So you definitely don't need to go for my exact solution. I would actually encourage you to try to find out what style you want for your game. I have made a lot of breakout games during the years. It's sort of my go-to project when learning new programming languages and tools. When I started working with Arduino a long time ago, I even made this breakout inspired game using an 8x8 LED matrix as the display. So I wanted to try something a bit different this time. I've always wanted to create something with some of all the really cool free assets from Kinney. And I figured this project would be perfect for it. Now, Kenny does have more traditional breakout art you can use. And if you like these, please go ahead and use them. But as I said, I wanted something a bit different. I've also been eyeing Kenny's platformer art for a really long time and wanted to find a way to use them. So I think I will mainly be using art from these art packs for my breakout game. But again, remember you can use whatever you like. The goal in this series shouldn't be to replicate exactly what I'm making, but instead to help you make your very own game. Okay, so now let's look at what the first task should be. A classic breakout game has three main parts. The paddle, the ball, and the bricks. Both the paddle and the ball can be good places to start. For this code along, we will start with the paddle. How the paddle moves and feels really lies the foundation for the rest of the game. So before you jump into working on your paddle, try to take some time to think about what you want to achieve. How should your paddle move? What kind of input does the player give to make the paddle move? Is it moved using the mouse or keys? Or maybe something completely different. Try to imagine how your ideal player would be playing the game. At a desk? In a couch? Or maybe somewhere else? Will they play short or long sessions? On a desktop or a laptop? Or maybe something completely different? What kind of player input do you think fits your case the best? Okay, now you've decided how the player should tell the game what direction the paddle should move. But there are still a few things you can consider. In a more classical breakout game, the paddle can only move left or right. But maybe you also want the player to be able to move the paddle a bit up or down. Does the paddle stop moving when it reaches the left or right of the screen? Or can it move outside the screen? Or maybe it moves to the left of the screen when it leaves the right side of the screen. Even when we are recreating classical games, 
it can be a good idea to think about what you want to achieve and why. If you can, try to experiment with a few different options and see what feels more fun to you. Finally, I want you to consider how the paddle acts. Does it stop moving exactly when the player input stops and with the same speed at all times? Or should there be some kind of friction in the game? So the paddle will accelerate up to the maximum speed when the player input starts and continues and accelerate down to zero once the player input stops. There is no right or wrong choice here. It all depends on what you want for your game and what you're capable of making, of course. This is always a factor for all developers, no matter what game we're working on. Just like time is always a factor. Okay, so these were the three steps I want you to think about to make your paddle move. One, what is the player input? Two, where should the paddle be able to move? And three, how does the movement work? Now, if you're very new to game development, you should still try to think about these things, but your main concern should be to create something. So for some of you, the best approach might be to start with something very close to the classical breakout game. And then if you have time, you can try to experiment with one or two of the other ideas I mentioned or something completely different. It's all up to you, of course. When I go through my solution in the future episodes, I will mainly focus on the basic game, but also give a few hints to other solutions. And that was all for this introductory episode. I highly recommend you give it your best shot before looking ahead for my solutions. Also, if you're following this code along, please consider joining the Megatech Discord channel and share your progress in there. If some of you share video clips of your solutions, I might also consider adding a few of these to future episodes. With your permissions, of course. In the next episode, I will be sharing how the paddle in my breakout game works and why I chose to make it like that. And then, of course, I'll also give a few hints to how it can be done differently. And finally, we'll be breaking down the next task we'll be working on. Have fun coding! Bye!